A lot of aspiring artists dream of making a full-time living off of their art, and it can be done. I'm living proof of that. Unfortunately, not every artist is cut out for it, so you have to ask yourself, do I have what it takes to be a full-time artist? <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground lair where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with Cirqueworks Art Labs. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because you have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. And I joke about the crazy part because there's a lot to being a professional artist that most people really don't understand or might find a little maddening if they knew what was involved. But don't worry, I am going to break down some of the important things that you need to know if you want to be a successful full-time artist. And then you can decide for yourself, is this a career path that I want to go down? Am I cut out for it? So we'll get into it. I'm going to do some artwork and let's get started. Before I dive into this topic, I just want you to know that if you embrace all of these things, all of these principles that I'm going to be talking about, I truly believe that you can be a successful, professional, full-time artist. However, there are exceptions to every rule. And there have been success stories from artists, very successful artists, that haven't done these things, haven't done all of these things, maybe only a few of these things, maybe none of these things, but those are very rare cases. Those are the outliers. So. I urge you not to really compare yourself to those people because honestly there are cases where sometimes you can just get lucky or just fall into a, a, a really awesome situation. Those things do happen and those things can help with an artist's career, but there's not those aren't the kind of things that you can just necessarily count on. These things that I'm going to talk about right now, these are tried and true things that you're going to need uh, to be a successful artist if you embrace all of these things. So knowing this, knowing that there are these outliers out there, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, I don't know if I'm really good at all of these things. I don't know if I'm really comfortable doing all of these things. But if you want to create the best opportunity for becoming a full-time artist, your best bet is to adopt most, if not all, of these principles. All right, so the first thing you need to know about being a professional artist is that that moniker, professional artist, it has two parts and they are in order. Most people want to just focus on the art, not the professional part, but this is a business first and foremost. And I didn't really understand that when I first started off. Uh, I was just kind of basing on my experience through high school and college where I was sort of the star artist or one of the star artists and I just thought, oh, I'm, you know, I had a little, you know, bit of an ego going into it and I was like, and I wanted to be a comic book artist. That's what I wanted to do. And I just had this idea that, you know, Stanley was going to see my stuff. He was going to come knocking on my door and be like, hey kid, I saw your work. You're great. I love you. Come work for us at Marvel Comics. You can start on the Fantastic Four tomorrow. And I just, I thought that's what it was going to be like, really, honestly. I just thought I was going to go out there with my portfolio show it off and I was just gonna get work like that and people are just gonna be sending me work and I wasn't gonna have to worry about all this business stuff and unfortunately that's kind of like this pie in the sky thing that doesn't have like I said there may be a few people uh, outliers that this may happen to but that is not the norm no matter how good you are and in retrospect at that point especially I was not I was not at the point that I thought I was I was living in this little bubble of high school and college and going out in the real world uh, I had a lot to learn, and I wish I would have learned a lot, this, a lot of this stuff sooner, especially this, con this idea that, that you got to focus on the business part. Because it took, me, it took me a long time to learn the business. When I went to school, I just basically, I was taking every art class available. I, didn't, I did, wasn't taking any of the academics. I should have I actually took some business classes or read up on marketing and things like that, because that stuff is so important if you want to be a successful full-time artist. And and I'm not saying that the art isn't important. Uh, it, it, and and I, I may be a little facetious when I said that the that the business part is more important. I think it's about equal. I mean, you gotta have you gotta have good artwork. But here's the thing: a mediocre artist who is a great business person, that type of person will often do better than an amazing artist who really isn't good at business. And I know that's probably not what you want to hear. And believe me, if, if I could only do my artwork and not worry about the business side of it and everything, all the marketing, all that stuff, I would be a much happier person. Although, as, as I learned the business side of it and I became more comfortable with it, 
I started to enjoy that and I realized that this is it 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 all goes together. It's very simpatico. So you can't really have one without the other. And most people that they, they just they don't realize that and they don't it's something that they they don't want to do. I didn't want to do it in the beginning, but I think if you if you if you jump into it and you embrace it, you're going to start to find a love for this and it's going to be you're going to start to enjoy it. But these things are so important. The, the marketing, you can have the best artwork out there, but if no one knows about it, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. You have to get your work out there. You have, to, you have to market your work. You have to put it in front of people. And you need to know how and you need to be comfortable communicating with clients. A lot of us as artists, we are introverted. I'm introverted. And it took a long time, but you gradually have to you have to sort of get out of that comfort zone. Uh, that I, you probably don't want to hear that e either, but it, it's super important. Uh, you have to be somebody that that clients and people you're working with trust. You have to be responsible. You have to meet deadlines, turn things on, on, in on time. That is super important. I, I know these fantastic artists that just can't meet deadlines and they don't get the kind of work that they should because they just can't deliver. Just being somebody that is pleasant to work with, that people like to work with, people work with who they want to work with. And, and if your work might not be the super top tier artist, but you are somebody that people want to work with, you're going to do better than that super tier, top, tier artist who's just a, either a prima donna or just somebody that just is frustrating to work with, who argues, who doesn't, you know, that that just that kind of relationship doesn't mix. You want that win-win between you and the person that you're working with. You have to be entrepreneurial. Art is everywhere. So that means there are opportunities everywhere. And a good entrepreneur knows where to look to find those opportunities. And as far as businesses go, art is a great business to be in. The upfront cost, the investment is minimal. The monetary investment, there really is, there's not that much to invest in. Sure, there's some software, uh, there's, you know, but most of it, you know, pen, paper, there, it's for a creative, there, it, there's not all that the supplies and everything compared to if you're going to go like the restaurant business or or any kind of anything where you're selling a product or whatever there's a lot of upfront costs with that with art it's it's really stuff that that is readily available a lot of it's free online that you can get so it's not that difficult to to get started in the business of doing art and that's the monetary investment. <laughs> that's one thing. There is an investment that you have to make and that leads me to the next section that I want to talk about and that is it takes time. You have to invest a lot of time if you want to be a professional artist. If you want to be a full-time artist, you are going to need patience. You are going to need to learn how to plan. You're going to have to have discipline. And if these things make you cringe, then you may not be cut out for this. Patience is a big one. It takes time to improve your art, to get better. You've got to invest that time into it and also just learning the business. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes and you can you can work around some of those mistakes by listening to other people and, and avoiding the same mistakes that they did. That's why I do a lot of these videos is so that you're not making the same mistakes and I talk about uh, you know things that I've done in the past that I wish I hadn't. But if you are the type of person that's just going on YouTube or, or you're Googling, how do I get better at art fast? Then maybe this isn't the line of work for you because there aren't really any shortcuts. It, it, you, you're going to have to invest that time and it will take time. And you gotta have discipline. It's about pushing. It's about dedication. It's about not giving up in the face of all of the naysayers, and there are going to be people that tell you, oh, you can't make a living at art, or you're wasting your time with this. And what they're really saying a lot of times is that maybe they gave up on their dreams, so they just don't think it can happen because, because they gave up, so they don't think other people can do it as well. But your situation isn't the same as somebody else's. Especially if you wanna be a full-time artist, you really have to have that tenacity, that grit. You're gonna need it because you're gonna be faced with a lot of adversity because uh, most people just don't understand this career path. The other thing you have to be good at is planning, managing your money, because when you, especially when you're first starting off, this thing is gonna be feast or famine. It's gonna be a lot more famine in the beginning probably when you're first starting off. 
but there are these ebbs and flows with this. I mean, there's going to be times where no money's coming in, and there's going to be times, hopefully, where you've got this little windfall that comes on in after a big job, and that's the way it is, especially in the beginning, and you have to be able to save and budget and put some money away for those lean times because those are going to happen, and it, it takes a little getting used to. It's not your typical nine-to-five job, There, and of course, there are alternative, there are other opportunities for artists at studios and things like that. That's really not what we're talking about here, where with more of a freelance situation, you are going to need to put money aside for the lean times and, and also for things like taxes, which is a whole other story. But you know, li living more of a, a like a Spartan lifestyle, because really, most people live for the weekend. They they work they work their day job or whatever, and then they take that money and they invest it in, you know, whether it's jet skis or toy haulers or or the things that like they like to do. Whereas their job isn't really what they like to do. If what you like to do is what you're doing, and that being art, then those other things can and they'll come with time. If you become a successful artist, which if if you take these things into consideration, uh, those things can happen, and you can be afforded, you know, the the cars and the things things like that. Uh, but in the beginning especially, it might take a little while to get to that point. But for me, that was fine to forego that type of stuff because I was enjoying what I was doing. If I wasn't working to go and do my hobby, my hobby was actually what I like to do for work. And a lot of times it does take a while to get off the ground. When I first started off, I was doing like part-time construction or whatever until, you know, my, my art business started to grow and you know sometimes you work that part-time job and if you can save stuff away or whatever it is or if it's a full-time you can manage it a full-time job and do your artwork on the side or maybe you have a spouse or significant other that can help kind of float you through when times are lean because like I said when when you do hit get those big jobs and if you're doing it right those big jobs are gonna pay and it's gonna be a nice little uh, you know windfall of money that's gonna help you both out so the next thing I want to talk about that you need to know if you want to be a successful full-time artist is knowing the value of your work. And a lot of artists, beginning artists particularly, struggle with this. What you need to understand is that not everyone can do art. For many people, it's just like this magic thing. They just don't understand it. It takes a long time to get good at art, to be a great artist. And because of that, there is value in that. As an artist, you shouldn't be charging less than what like a plumber may charge. And not to disparage plumbers, there are some very experienced plumbers that can figure you know, out any situation. Uh, but if I wanted to learn how to fix my toilet myself, I could go on YouTube and find like a DIY video of an experienced plumber walking me through that. And I could probably learn to do that on the spot. With art, it's not that simple. If you've watched some drawing video, chances are if you follow those videos step by step exactly how that professional artist is doing it, your artwork still probably isn't going to look as good as theirs. Art takes time to learn and improve on and get better at and get great at. It's not this step by step thing that you can just do easily. Art is a creative field, and as a creative field, it's open to interpretation. No two artists are going to approach the same project the same way. Everyone's going to add their own little flair, do something differently, and that's why really there is there's really not you don't have, you don't look at other artists as competition because you have your own things that you're going to bring to the table. So there really isn't any competition. And I hear this all the time from other artists that, oh, there's just too much competition. There's things like Fiverr out there that are driving down the price of art. And yes, Fiverr is bad for artists. It's not, it's not, <laughs> it's really not helping artists any. Uh, but again, another story. But what you need to realize, like I said before, art is everywhere. So that means there are opportunities for artists if you know where to find them. And they aren't like on places like Fiverr. You need to charge what your work is worth, not just what you think you might be able to get for it. Because You'd be surprised, you can get more than you, you, you would expect if you, if you trust yourself. And you are gonna run into people that say, oh, that's too expensive, I can't pay for that. I, oh, I can find an artist to do that cheaper. And what you can respond to that with is, well, I can find another client who values the artwork and is willing to pay more. You need to shift away from this scarcity mindset that says, oh, there's just, people aren't willing to pay this for art or there's not enough clients out there, there's not enough jobs, there's not enough work to go around. There's plenty of work to go around. You need to shift to an abundance mindset because, like I said, everywhere you look, and I'll keep repeating this, but everywhere you look is art. Somebody is creating that artwork. 
Why can't that be you? There's no reason why it can't be you if you just understand the value of your work, the time that you put into it, all the hours that you put into it. That is worth something. That's something that not everyone else has. So compared to another vocation that can be easily picked up, you know, you learn these step-by-step -step things and you learn and then you can charge a decent amount. You need to understand that your artwork has value and you need to know how to articulate that to somebody who maybe doesn't really understand it, who isn't getting it, and just repeating the things that I said. That, oh, this is the time that I put into it. It took me so many years to be a great artist. If it, if it only takes me so long to create this one thing, it's not the hours that you're putting in that I'm putting in on your project. It's the hours that it took me to get good enough to do this in this amount of time. That's the value that you personally bring to the table as an artist. The last thing I want to leave you with is that you have to have the right attitude. You have to love this stuff. If if you don't have a passion for this, if it's just like if this is just like oh this is an interesting way to make money, it might be fun, you're never going to make it as a full-time artist. And that's fine. A lot of artists they do they do art as a hobby and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, this isn't this isn't a hobby for me. This is a lifestyle. I mean, I live and breathe this stuff day in and day out. This is all I've ever wanted to do. It's all I ever want to do. This isn't like a job that I can clock out of and go home and forget about it. It's always on my mind. I'm always looking at creative solutions to problems and things. I mean, this is this is all, this is what I enjoy doing. This is what I live for. And if you're somebody that lives for this too, and you may be listening to some of these things that I'm talking about and you're like, oh, um, yeah, I, I love art, but I don't know about the business thing. I mean, if you love it enough that you are going to want to learn to adopt these things that I'm talking about, even if these are things that you may not want to do that are gonna require you to get outside of your comfort zone, you're, you're gonna have to do it. If you want it bad enough, you will do it. I mean, I did it too, I was the same way. I didn't want it. I didn't want to learn the business stuff. I didn't want to, you know, call people. I didn't want to go on YouTube and show my face and talk about it. But the more I do it, the the more the better I get at it. The more comfortable I did it. And it's just those little steps. I guarantee you, if you take all these things into consideration, you put them into practice then you are well on your way to being a successful full-time artist. So that's about all I have to talk about today and that'll wrap up this topic of do I have what it takes to be a full-time illustrator? And I wanna know in the comments section, what are your biggest obstacles to becoming a professional full-time illustrator, artist, graphic designer, any creative field, whatever you're doing, what are those obstacles? I wanna know in the comment section, let me know, and, and how you think you might be able to overcome them. I'll talk to you later, that is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.